G'day guys, and welcome to five gins that made me look twice in 2020. A couple that were distilled in, in 2020, in fact, all of the batches of these were some probably maybe previously available in 2019, but definitely some gins that I found incredibly interesting. Uh, let's go here from, uh, from right to left, and we're going to start with this amazing gin here from Noosa Head Distilleries. A collaboration they did with some fun guys, some young guys, which is a restaurant there in Noosa. This gin is insane, possibly one of my favorites of last year. It's made to basically replicate or taste like pho. So they put in things like spring onion, um, fish sauce to give it a sort of, you know, ramen-y pho taste that you normally get from a broth. And... And it really does hit the nail on the head with it. When you first taste it, uh, unmixed, it's it's quite a really nice sort of like decadent umami flavour. Incredibly, you know, incredibly nice and luscious texture, which makes me feel like it'd be really, really good in a martini. But in a G&T with something like a Fever Tree Indian or a Mediterranean, it actually brings out a little bit more of that sort of like the fishiness, um, which, which I really like. And it might sound a little bit absurd, but... Don't knock it till you try it. That one's quite a special gin, I think. Uh, and second up, another one of my personal favorites, Antagonist, Hard Cut Gin. So these guys have been absolutely killing it. They've gone through a couple of batches now um, after launching in late 2019, I believe. This one is, is really cool because it's made to taste like Australian grass, basically. Uh, it's, it's distilled with, with grasses, uh, in a way that sort of gives it this aroma of a freshly mowed grass in an, in an Australian summer. And, and it really does. It brings back that sort of nostalgic smell of freshly mown Australian grass. Peculiar, you know. And not, I guess, what we'd normally expect out of a gin. But I think if last year taught us anything, it's that now with, you know, over 700 gins in the Australian market. It's these gins that are maybe a little bit left of field that are the ones that are, are really particularly interesting and, and the ones that, you know, I'm really loving at the moment. So that's well, that's one of the five gins that really made me look again. Uh, another one is this one here from the Great Ocean Road Distillery. And now, what I really love about this is, I mean, there's a couple of things. I'm a big Navy Strength gin fan, and this is their Navy Strength, their split point. They've also got their Gavos, but this is their, their Navy Strength. And it's called Split Point, um, which I guess, it, that's the lighthouse, if anyone remembers from Round the Twist, famous lighthouse in, in Australian sort of maritime history. It's probably guided a lot of boats home. So I like that it's sort of paying homage to Australian maritime history as, and it's a Navy Strength gin. But, I mean, it's it's the flavour profile that, that makes it really interesting. So... And uh, forages around the Great Ocean Road, basically, for the botanicals for this one. Uh, coast daisy, local honey, salt bush, but also a little bit of kelp in there, which we're seeing a little bit more from a few distilleries. Um, and I think it's really interesting. So another one that the botanical profile of it and what's going into it, you just think that's pretty, that's pretty wacky. But... Nosing it and, it, and it is very maritime, and it is quite funky, but I think really funky in a good way, and these are some of the gins that are making me look twice. Anyway, the, the next one, um, the Wishbone, well, this is making me look twice, maybe for another reason, um, and that is that it is just, it's just this amazing packaging. Uh, it's, it's pretty much a, a contemporary Australian gin in that it's very citrus forward, lots of grapefruit. Uh, but it's really, really special in that I haven't seen a packaging gin like this. It looks like some sort of awesome tin. And look, you can definitely keep this one after you've you've had it as well and put it on the shelf. It's really bloody awesome packaging. And and uh, the gin itself too, amazing. You know, gin and tonic is probably how I drink that one. Bit of fresh orange in there, bit of fresh grapefruit, and you can have a really good time. But it's the packaging particularly of this one which made me look at it again and and lastly number number five to round out the gins that made me look twice last year um and this is this is just a collection of of a few there were so many amazing gins last year uh and there will continue to be more this year and for, for years to come but 
these are ones that stood out for you know interesting reasons for me. And the next one, well, it's actually not Australian. So this one comes from the Audemars, Audemars Distillery. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. In France. France is, French is my second language, so we're not too sure about that one. But it translates to, uh, to dare, to be daring. And this gin is, is definitely this. Um, it's a, a mommy gin is, is what they've called it. And what they do is they distill capers uh, and then a little bit of juniper in there as well, plus another sort of like base of various botanicals. Then they, they whack it in a barrel with, would you believe it, parmesan cheese. So there's actually, if you have a look in this one and, and you see close up, it'll be hard to see on, on camera, but there's a little bit of parmesan cheese. They barrel age it as well. So it goes into cognac barrels and comes out and it's just got this, this most amazing, luxurious umami profile to it. And um, a gin as well that in a martini is probably going to be pretty, pretty bad. So these are five gins, five cracking gins that really made me look twice last year and gins that are thankfully still available. So if you want to grab yourself a, a bottle of any of these amazing gins or if you've got any questions or want to come in and try them, drop into the store um, and we can have a chat over a, a cheeky little G&T. Cheers.